Hello boys and girls. In this video we are going to look at the action of a Lie group element obtained from a matrix exponential and we will look at the implementation of the matrix exponential um, uh, in the context of again rotations. So um, let me start with the um, animation that will be the outcome of all the code we're going to look at. Um, this is a sphere and random generated points here they are projected onto the sphere and what will then happen is that the blue point the sphere point corresponding to the blue um, let me turn this around will after a few seconds start to move towards uh, the the green uh, sphere point and it does this by doing the right rotation and I then you know, I plot a bunch of points along this motion. The right rotation around the axis, and this axis is the one which stands uh, perpendicular to these two uh, these two vec vectors, right? So it's not too easy to compute this rotation axis where it has to be. And then, given the rotation axis, um, or more concretely, the angle axis vector, you know, the the vector pointing along the axis as well as the uh, the angle which is the length of this this vector we can compute with the matrix exponential the rotation which is the Lie group element which does exactly the job that we want um, I run it again and it will generate two more random points right this time the uh, further apart even so it generates these points this one and this one projects them onto the the sphere and then after a few seconds uh, cannot really turn it properly god damn it <laughs> i want to turn it and th these are like uh, almost 180 degrees apart so it doesn't look so great um and then it rotates and also i add an extra random point the other point that's moving is is just there to show that this is re indeed just a rotation around the the gray axis right because you know, let's have the point arrive at the final destination. If you consider a rotation which does this job at once, then there would still be one degree of freedom, right? After this rotation, you could still do a rotation around the green axis. And if I only plot it with one point, then you could not see it because if the rotation is around the final axis, then you would not see it. And so I plot this extra point um, to show uh, that it is indeed just a rotation uh, around this this axis. So here um, I made again some some gifs and these run faster. In this case, it sampled closer angles, and it rotates around this. Let me run it again. And so I compute the angle there, and I think I cut it into forty parts and plot all the in between steps as well. So for all. In between angle angles, I actually compute another rotation matrix and apply it to the initial, and it moves over. And here, the same thing, which is a nice one. This is without the third point. This was before I added the third point. Also shows it. I had to, like, since the points are randomly generated, I had to start this, like, 30 times to get very good angles uh, where I can show it very nicely and <laughs> where my moving around of the coordinate system is not too annoying. Okay, um, in this video, I, um, I we will code up the matrix exponential and then do all the job of you know projecting and computing angle, computing the axis and so on. Um, however, uh, what I take for granted is that the matrix exponential of the um, angle axis vector interpreted as an element of the SO3 Lie algebra actually gives a rotation. Um, and I motivate this in, in various videos, right? So I actually have a, a separate video on the angle axis or axis angle, um, like mathematics. And there I even by, by hand compute a few simple angles. And if you have watched SU3 Lie group videos and this rotation stuff there, then uh, you should get something out of it. Also, um, if you are just inter interested in three dimensional rotations, then and you have the, the this the axis uh, and the angle. 
then there is a more explicit formula where you don't have to compute the matrix exponential, but you just actually have to compute the right sine and cosine values. And that is the Rodriguez formula, which is very close to Euler's uh, formula. Um, but uh, in this video, we are um, not making use of that. That m would maybe be a little bit more precise or com like to get this a better precision for the s same computational effort. However, the matrix exponential that we are recording up in this video is much general, much more general because uh, it works for any representation of a uh, uh, Lie group, right? Linear representation of a Lie group as matrices. We just use the generic matrix exponential that you don't even have to apply to Lie algebra element. It's just an, a function of matrices, really. Okay, so uh, with that said, um, let's watch it one last time in the video format and then uh, jump into the code. So this is what we are going to get. Uh, I'm not going to code the animation itself, but I, I will compute all the data here. And the animation itself is the same animation tool that I coded up in the video on the spherical pendulum. Okay. So, um, we start with uh, this algebra.py file. I just used the numpy library because the numpy library has um, the, the class, this numpy array class, where you can uh, add vectors and matrices uh, component-wise, and I'm going to make use of that so I don't have to iterate my um, you know, myself through lists of lists to have matrix addition. Um, Okay, I mean, uh, there's a simple function I'm not going to explain in much detail. This is just a function which takes uh, a matrix, a list of lists, makes sure that um, all the um, the lists in the list have the same length, right? That is actually a, f a rectangular shape, like a matrix has to be. And then it returns the pair, the number of columns, the number of rows. Good, and I, I take that for granted. The transposition function also take that for granted. I mean, this is just moving around the, the list a little bit, the elements in the list and tr giving you, you get from a, you know, um, I don't know, three, five matrix or list of lists to a five, three, one. And then we already have the matrix exponential here. So uh, the matrix exponential for us here is finite precision, of course. Um, and I take an integer, which represents uh, the accuracy and some matrix that I want to exponentiate. And the formula the, for the expo uh, exponent um, is, is this one, right? Um, you know that from the scalar case, if you have the complex numbers, let's say, and you go with uh, k to infinity, then that's one way of defining the exponential function. And uh, in this case, we do the same thing, except the, um, the matrix is a three times three matrix, um, in fact, I think this code doesn't even assume. Well, this is actually like a D times D matrix. It doesn't even assume that it's free. Um, I generalized it at one point in my code. And um, so it takes that and interprets the arithmetic that naturally pops up, you know, if you take uh, K equals eight, for example. Uh, just uses the matrix um, arithmetic, um, you know, addition of matrices and multiplication of uh, matrices as they are in this matrix ring. And um, yeah, and so uh, there's another parameter, the n, the accuracy. And uh, since to compute this product, we can actually like do it iteratively um, in um, like exponentially, we can, ironically, we can exponentially compute it by, you know, we take an, uh, the the expression, uh, this expression, um, multiply it with itself, then we have it to the power of two. And then if we, if we take that and uh, multiply it with itself, then we have power of four, uh, power of um, eight, and so on and so forth. So we, we also move exponentially with just n steps of multiplication, we reach, I don't know, two to the power of n. And so this n is this this power, right? And yeah, so to compute it, to compute just this, um, we start with the identity matrix. We can get this from NumPy with the dimensions like so. Here's also an assertion that this is indeed a square matrix. And then our exponent, here I called it K, here it's called S. Um, oh no, the S is one over K. Okay, 
can add that. Sorry, s equals one over k. Um, we initialize like so. This is just the the thing here, and then we do this iterative multiplication of the thing with itself. This is just p squared, and the p changes, and so in this way we get uh, to this expression with very very fast. Um, and that's the matrix exponential, right? And the promise is that I'm not going to explain in this video, um, but the promise is that the um, matrix exponential takes a Lie algebra element and gets you the, uh, uh, another matrix, which is part of the representation of the corresponding Lie group. And in our case, if we have the SO3, the small SO3 Lie algebra element, which we can inter interpret as the angle axis, then we get a rotation matrix around the this angle axis. So okay, we have the exponential uh, matrix exp in our pockets. Let's go now to another file, uh, which I called space pi. So space pi um, here denotes three dimensional space, even, even a constant here as opposed to space time or some higher spaces. Um, this is just a zero vector in three dimensions, uh, identity matrix again, and basis vectors for the three-dimensional space, right? What I do here is I have here the identity matrix in three-dimensional space, you know how it looks like, and I interpret the rows. Uh, I take the rows, um, the, fir the first row of the identity matrix in three-dimensional would be one, zero, zero. And this is, for example, a way to get the basis vectors, right? Okay, that's what I do here. And now um, I define very explicitly this particular standard representation of the SO3 Lie algebra you might recognize. I have no uh, Wikipedia pages in this video for a change, um, but this is also, this, this representation is very similar to um, the whole discussions that I have on uh, quaternions and SU3 um, in these videos, uh, which is no accident because um, of the the interplay between the SO3 and SO3 Lie group, where it turns out that the algebras are um, the same, and for the two-dimensional representation, um, you have these nice SO3 elements, and so they also function as rotations, covering groups, blah blah blah. Um, but uh, so I'm not going to explain w why the matrices are looking like that, but a hint, I mean, quaternion representation, it all comes together there. Um, okay, uh, but this is three-dimensional because we are interested in the SO3 rotation group, which we get by exponentiating points in the Lie algebra. This, every every of those, for example here, this is the set one, is uh, a um, basis vector in the free, uh, Lie algebra, which if I, you know, I can also like imagine it as just this Euclidean space, which is three-dimensional. And, um, or Cartesian space, if you don't want to introduce a metric here. Um, and then uh, this constant is just the base frame as a list. Okay, um, yeah, so uh, given any vector represented as a list of three components, of three floats in this case, vec is just three, uh, vector of three components, um, we can interpret it as an element of any three-dimensional the algebra over the same field, um, of the same field as our um, vector components are there here, uh, implemented as floats representing reals, if you will. Um, and uh, what we do here is we just take the components and instead of um, having this standard um, Cartesian basis vectors, you know, those, we actually don't use those, but we translate the whole thing to use these uh, matrices as basis vectors, right? And the result will be not just a vector which is presented to us with three components, but actually as a three times three matrix. And the space of these three, three matrices is nevertheless still just three dimensional. So what happens here, uh, or oh, this theme is redefined, it's unnecessary. Um, yeah, okay, I assert this is three dimensional vector that is coming in. I Computer components, this is a generator of these three components. It's a very fancy Pythonic way of writing it. I zip up the vector, which has dimension three, and this frame, which also has three elements, and multiply each 
component with the corresponding uh, base. So the, the X component, the first component of VEC will be multiplied with this matrix and we will get some three by three matrix where, where only two components are uh, non-zero. And uh, then I take these components and add them all up. I, you know, I initialize the matrix, which is the zero matrix. And then I just do the addition in uh, of these matrices and out I get then the, the vector, which will be our angle axis vector, but as a three times three matrix, you know, we, we read this as an element of the Lie algebra. And as I said, the promise is that if you uh, take the matrix exponent of any Lie algebra element, in this case, we talk about small SO3 and big SO3, then we get a Lie um, group element. And in this case, this will be our rotation matrix around this axis vector, where the direction is the axis, the gray line that we saw before, right? So again, the input is an, a, a vector, then the vector will, for example, be here, for example, like pointing from the, uh, oops, sorry. Pointing from, from the center to there, like let's say it's like this long, and this, the direction is, is parallel to the axis, and the length of the vector is the angle here in radians. So in this case, the um, the vector will be longer than in in uh, this case where the where the the angle is only like about half of it. Right? This is also the vector will again lie on this on the axis that is that comes with the green and blue uh, vectors. This is basically the cross product as we will see in a second. And the length determines the, uh, the, the, the length determines the angle or the angle determines the length um, for this rotation. Okay, um, so what we have here is again an accuracy parameter. This is the same parameter as with the matrix exponential. And then any vector, I call this angle axis vector here. I apply the function that we have just defined, right? Which lets us interpret this vector as an element of the D algebra. And then we take the matrix exponential from the algebra um, file that we just coded up. And we choose the same accuracy and we get a rotation matrix out of it. And that's, this is also like in previous videos, like in the, in the video on the prolate, uh, rotation, you know, the, the torque free one. I uh, also computed a rotation uh, object. In this case, it's a particular class from the SciPy library from uh, the angle axis vector. So this is this multiplication is the angle axis vector here. This was a rotation in Z direction about the angle phi. Um, and but there I was using this this um, imported class from SciPy, as you see here. Um, but now we do the same thing with a certain accuracy that we can fix by ourselves with the matrix exponential, um, which is even a general matrix exponential. This will work for any Lie group which has this finite dimensional linear representation. Okay, uh, so much for the space file. And finally, we get to our um, the, the actual thing that we want to, um, like where we get the data that we also plot. Um, I import uh, random because I generate these three random points, right? Two of which give the um, green and blue lines. Um, import the space um, file that we just saw and then a bunch of uh, other uh, you know, basic functions, the animation thing that I explained in the spherical pendulum uh, one. Um, and some plotting tools. Again, I'm not going to be concerned with the plotting tools. The bowl, it says bowl here, but actually we are going to use it as this sphere, right? I, I explained this sphere um, you know, in the, again, in the video on the spherical pendulum. Where is it? Here. There uh, we had the pendulum <laughs> swinging in, in a bowl. And if you just complete the bowl, you get a sphere, right? So this is the same code that I reused there. Um, okay. so. Um, little to do with rotation, but um, since in the animation I compute the angle and then plot everything in between, right? I, I uh, plot 50 um, in between points here, right? So 
these are 50 points between these these two points and so what i need is what i call a ramp um which like starts at zero this it's a ramp that starts at zero which has the effect that if i restart the video i actually have to wait a little bit before this thing starts moving this is implemented by taking the angle but setting it to zero for a few seconds or for like 20 iterations then it ramps up linearly the, the angle goes from um, one uh, value uh, from the value zero to whatever the angle the full angle is that we still have to compute and then it stays there like after i arrived the video goes on a little bit you know, now i arrived and i nevertheless stay on on it for, for a few more seconds for a few more iterations and so there's a ramp which is zero 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 then goes up and um then stays at zero i uh, stays at at the, the full angle and um so to do that i have this generic function which i call ramp where you give uh, it a start value you know 20 frame how many frames it uh, should then actually go up the ramp num steps um and what is index and the index is the current index it returns then it takes an, a natural number index and it, it returns one number between zero and one and this ramp we will then multiply with the full angle to get this ramping up of the angle okay um and i mean this is just the implementation of the function that is just described right it stays at zero until the start index is reached then it ramps up from zero to one in num steps and here you see an implementation you know you do min max of whatever you uh you um, want to compute and this is this this linear rising i mean um not going to like explain it more than than that because you should have an intuition um okay and, and now we get into the actual um into the meat of it uh as in the previous video um on the prolate object rotation i do it by uh, setting up a configuration struct or class in this case in python case um, where i just fix some constants which are essentially arbitrary um, i have an accuracy of 10 which is going to mean 2 to the power of 10 uh, in the matrix exponential um, which means about thousand right it's about the thousand uh, multiplications of this starting matrix that one plus the Lie algebra element divided by a thousand um, to the power of thousand so it's pretty accurate that's why it looks so nice in the end but it just takes 10 multiplications um, the radius uh, which however is ir irrelevant I scale everything by this radius so if I would set it to three then it would still look the same because the the box size of the animation is then also scaled by three so this is just to show that you don't have to set it to one this sphere but okay um, and then the whole thing runs for uh, about 100 frames it um it uh, waits 20 frames at the beginning and then uh moves for 50 frames and then there's another frame the total runtime is uh, defined in the configuration of the animation uh, function which i, I don't uh, discuss in this video so here's 20 frames while i do the rotation to get it into a nice angle then 50 frames when it moves over then another 20 30 frames till it actually stops um okay and then my um my ramp is then um you know zero 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 and then floats in between and then one 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 and so i actually define this here also as a config uh, as a is a, a generator in a config maybe i could define it outside of the config because um, it's questionable to call it co uh, configuration H however i just edit it here so that i don't have to like oh that's interesting i even actually uh, this should not be necessary probably i can just probably remove it here but nonetheless i mean this is doesn't really matter it works so whatever the scope of the ramp is this is just a simple float ramp from zero to one okay um Yeah, then here a convenience function, which makes use of the random um, function uniform, which just gives me uh, random values in the in certain interval. Here's the interval. I will um, I will then pass the box size. So right, the box size is, is 
I think from here, from, from zero to, to this thing and our box size is, I don't know, um, I can look it up. Our box size is uh, two times 1.5. So our box size is three. So this thing is, if I uh, interpreted it right now correctly, this is six, length of six, here also length of six. And so um, this will just sample a random point inside the box, right? And we do this, actually we do it for three points, uh, one, two, three, these are the po points which are just randomly generated from which we start. And this is the function which, this is the function which um, in a standard Python sense generates n points, the number of points is going to be three that lie inside of the box. And you can look at the code, I will not explain it now because it's sort of self-explanatory. Just use, uh, just generate a uniform uh, point or several of those, not just in an interval of floats, but in a three-dimensional situation. Okay, and then essentially we're already now at the, at the end of, um, of the video in the sense that this is the last function which now puts everything together uh, in a sort of obvious way. The only thing that we still have to know is how you're not know, given uh, two points, how to project them on the sphere, um, which here just means to normalize them to the length of the radius of the sphere. Then uh, how to compute the axis? Um, well, you take the cross product of two vectors, which will be a vector perpendicular to this. And so this is then the perfect vector around which we can rotate um, and that will take one of the vectors projected onto the sphere to the other one. Then what is the angle, right? If you have two normalized vectors, if you compute to compute the angle, the, the cosine of the angle is just the scalar product between them. So the, the arc cosinus, the inverted cosine, cosine um, of the scalar product gives you the angle. So this is when you have learned that in school, if you, in any case. Uh, and this is what we're going to implement here. So. Again, I fix, I'm in three dimension. I'm interested in three points. I generate the random points by applying the function we have just defined. And as I said, I apply it to the interval by given by the box size so that the points are actually inside of the box I want to plot in the end. Um, and the fixed points are going to be the ones that the, the, the points are, they are staying right throughout the whole animation. So you know, even if this thing is moving, uh, these points are the fixed, mm, Jesus. These points are the fixed points in space. Even if I rotate the coordinate system around to look at the plot, but the, the points are fixed with respect to the coordinate frame. Um, and um, these are the points, these random points that are generated that I will now project. And also there's this third hovering point that is there for visualization of the rotation. So let me run this again. So while while this point is moving, this point is also moving around the axis. Okay, so these are the fixed points, these two points and this hovering point. The normalized ones, are, okay, here I use the normalized function, but the normalized function is just taking the vectors and dividing them through the norm. So they are normalized to one. And then to project them actually onto the sphere, I have to take the point and multiply them by the, the radi radius of the sphere. So now I have these points. Now I went from this point to this point and from this point to this point and I do it for these two fixed points. Um, the points, the point that I'm rotating is, is just one of them. Here, this is the first point. The first point will, by the plotting library, be plotted in, in with the blue um, line. Um, the second one is green. This is just uh, what the uh, matlib, matplotlib um, chooses. Oh no, wait, actually I choose them myself. Let me scroll down. Yeah, I actually, oh, you cannot see this. I actually choose these colors here. Um, the first one is uh, blue and the second one is green, but okay. Um, I only take the, the first point, right? This is the point. Here, this is the point. And I, I rotate them with different angles. So I compute different rotation matrices and I apply it to this vector, get some point in between, plot this point. Remember all what I have plotted, that's why how you get the purple line um, that emerges here. Um, and so the zero component of this fixed, of the projected, sphere projected uh, points is this, this dot here that is rotated. Um, yeah, and then um, the normalized angle axis vector, normalized meaning 
doesn't know about the angle yet, about its size, is just the cross product of the these two points, right? And I, I compute the cross product and then I um, I normalize it back to size one by calling this normalized function. And I will in a second multiply this, this normalized angle axis vector, the vector that points parallel to the axis by the angle, which I still have to compute. Um, okay, um, so given given an angle and having computed this um, the axis direction, which stays the same for the whole simulation, I can uh, code up this helper function, which takes an angle and any points that I want to change and computes the angle axis vector, which as I said, is just the multiplication. The multiplication here is of a scalar float with a numpy uh, vector, three dimensional. Uh, I pass this to the function that I um, the, um, that I explained. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, sorry, I have not really explained this 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 function, but I have to explain it in detail in the video about the um, in the video about the um, prolet object uh, rotating in space in the last video from last week, right? So this. Um, this just takes, um, sorry, not this function, sorry. Now, where is it? Oh, no, wait, I have to actually explained it, sorry. This is, yeah, the, the, right, this is just, you know, this is just uh, taking the angle axis vector and giving me the rotation matrix. Right. Oh, I, have, I have explained it, I was just confused because, again, in the last video, we used the, the library where, um, you got back not a rotation matrix in NumPy, but this rotation class where you can very handily convert it uh, between rotation axis vector and quaternion and three times three matrix and so on. You can jump around. Here, of course, I have just this very hands-on wrapper around the matrix exponential, but okay. Here's this, um, this function, so everything is implemented. Uh, that gives me a rotation back. So this thing that comes back is a rotation matrix. Um, the uh, accuracy is defined in the configuration and the angle axis vector I just computed from the parameter of this function and this fixed um, um, normalized vector given by the just randomly generated points and then it applies this rotation matrix to all the vectors of points that are going to be rotated and of course what we are rotating is just these two points so this you know the the, f the the first point on the sphere and then the hovering point okay then uh here finally the full angle um to wrap up the geometry is given by the arcos of the inner product i have explained this this is just how you pass the whole list and it takes the first two um, computes that as a vector of this is a list of two vectors and it just passes them as arguments this is what this python star is to the inner product. Um, you know, this is just in the component-wise multiplication and sum of those. Um, yeah, and now finally we, we generate the stream of points that is passed to our animation library uh, function. Um, the same uh, animation tool that I used in the last, like videos in the last uh, um, months. Um, and this takes as an input uh, a stream of data and here we just wrap up um, what we have collected. So the angles are given by the full angle times this number between zero and one that is given by the ramp. The ramp here is this just constant stream. Um, this gives us a number, some float between zero and one and we multiply it by the full angle. And so we get zero, 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 then we ramp up to the full angle. And then we stay at the full angle for, for a while. Um, and the moving sphere points are then uh, the, the points to rotate for all the angles. So this function we just coded up for all the angles and the points to rotate are moving sphere points. Okay, I should actually not call this moving sphere points because the hovering point is also part of this list. So I will just call this moving points. We we'll rename this here. Right, I added the hovering point uh, as an afterthought for to visualize that the last degree of the rotation is actually not anything else than identity. 
uh, you know, no, no rotation around the green axis, if you will. Um, and then the stream consists of these points, these moving points that are here generated and all the fixed points and the points on the sphere and also the, the angle axis vector, which are below used to, um, to plot this gray axis, right? I can show you this for a second, but I will not discuss just the application of the matplotlib library that gives me this three-dimensional image. Okay, and with that, I think we're through. The code uh, is as always in the gist box uh, below, in this uh, gist file. And I hope it was helpful. Um, at the moment, I'm interested again in, in some constructive analysis proofs. And I was thinking that that a proof that the matrix exponential um, for higher and higher accuracies indeed corresponds to the operation that rotates. You know, you can quantify the, the fact that this actually rotates properly, that this is actually the right uh, transformation by the fact that the, the difference between the end point and the the, the, um, the point that is being rotated converges to zero they get closer and closer and in that sense the, the actually the, the correct transformation happens and this statement alone um, would be a good candidate for some non-trivial um, formal proof I might do that next if people are interested I will do it for myself anyway you know really like like uh, in a, in a nasty fashion, like digging into the, the set theory foundations and doing it, it properly. I'm interested in that. I'm ex in particular interested which sort of uh, induction I need, right? And and all this sort of constructive analysis stuff. Um, and this might be one of these formal logic videos that I end up making. Uh, if you're interested in that, let me know. Um, then I might prepare a video on it eventually, which might take a few months to make a nice one, but this is on my mind. Okay. Um, so with that said, I wish you a nice evening, guys.